ஓம் நாராயணம் நவ்யூ டுடே இஸ் சுகமா ஸோ இன் சுகமா த சென்டென்ஸ் விச் சுவாமிஜி இஸ் காமெண்டிங் ஆன் இஸ் அத்தியாசம் புரஸ்கிருத்திய சர்வே பிரமாண பிரமேய வியவகாராக பிரவருத்தாக ஆல் வியவகாரா வியவகாரா சச்சாஸ் பிரமாண பிரமேய ஓகே ஸோ பிரமாண பிரமேய பிரமாத்ருத்வ திஸ் இஸ் த வியவகார ஸோ வாட் இஸ் வாட் இஸ் பிரமாத்ருத்வம் வி ஹவ் எக்ஸ்பிளைன்ட் வாட் இஸ் பிரமேய தட் இஸ் த ஆப்ஜெக்ட் ஆஃப் நாலேஜ் வாட் இஸ் பிரமாண த இன்ஸ்ட்ருமெண்ட் ஆஃப் நோயிங் சச் ஆஸ் த பர்செப்ஷன் பிரத்யக்ஷ அனுமான அண்ட் சப்த மெயின்லி பிரமாணா சார் த்ரீ சம் பீப்புள் ஹவ் சப் டிவைடெட் தெம் அண்ட் தே மேக் இட் இன்டு சிக்ஸ் ஓகே பட் ரஃப்லி வி கேன் சே தே ஆர் த்ரீ விச் ஆர் ஜெனரலி அக்செப்டட் பை ஆல் த பீப்புள் ஆல் த ஸ்கூல்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஃபிலாசஃபி ஸோ திஸ் த்ரீ பிரமாணாஸ் ஒன் இஸ் பிரத்யக்ஷ செகண்ட் இஸ் இன்ஃபரன்ஸ் தட் இஸ் அனுமான ஃபஸ்ட் இஸ் பர்செப்ஷன் பிரத்யக்ஷ செகண்ட் இஸ் இன்ஃபரன்ஸ் அனுமான அண்ட் தேர்ட் இஸ் த சப்த பிரமாண ஓகே தீஸ் த்ரீ பிரமாணாஸ் ரிவீல் தேர் ஓன் ரெஸ்பெக்டிவ் ஆப்ஜெக்ட்ஸ் ட்வெண்ட்டி த்ரீ ட்வெண்ட்டி ஃபோர் இஸ் இஸ் டுடே the resultant vritti which arises as a result of pramata connecting with prameya through pramana okay prama through the pramata gets connected to prameya through pramana this also is an explanation only because in our anubhava we don't find pramatru independently without prameya nar prameya independent of pramata nor there is a there is a uh, two these two separate remaining separate and coming together nobody has experienced anyway i don't want to go into those technical details that may come at a later stage those are highly advanced vedantins okay that will come at much later stage but at the moment this much is enough pramatru pramana prameya this is a triputi this triputi is there in everybody's experience you find the you find ah uh, so this you find yourself to be pramata being connected to prameya through some pramana now the pramana the pramana phalam is prama prama is the vritti which reveals the object so which reveals the gneya so what is that pra, prama prama is a chidabhasa chidabhasa referring to a given object is a pramana phalam now here you see this i want to say little bit is chida bhasa okay chida bhasa and and uh, how chida bhasa itself in the in the vritti is called oh sorry this i am disturbing <coughs> because swami ji in his general pravachanas writings say சிதாபாசாக சித் வியாப்தாக ஆல் த ஆப்ஜெக்ட்ஸ் ஆர் சிதாபாசாக சித் வியாப்தாக ஸோ விதவுட் கோயிங் இன் டு மச் டெக்னிக்கல் டீட்டெயில்ஸ் த பேசிக் திங் ஐ டெல் யூ அதர் டெக்னிக்கல் டீட்டெயில்ஸ் யூ வில் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் டெக்னிக்கல் டீட்டெயில்ஸ் மென்ட் வாட் இட் இஸ் அ சிம்பிள் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் ஆஃப் எவ்ரிபடி தட் எனி நாலேஜ் ஈஸ் எ சிதாபாசா ஓன்லி any knowledge of the worldly object is a chida bhasa the more technical detail only means comparing contrasting with other schools of philosophy others explanation if you contrast it becomes complicated as you understand the truth directly it is easy then when will when does it become more technical and more complicated when you compare and contrast with other schools other philosophers explanations 
now we don't go into that comparison and contrast we just see what is chidabhasa what is the vritti vritti gnanam now chidab chitt means the direct chaitanyam that is like in deep sleep the, what you find yourself in deep sleep is directly pure non dual consciousness and when you find in waking state when you find yourself in waking state you have the wakeful consciousness this wakeful consciousness is called chidabhasa <coughs> because the pure chait <coughs> ప్యూర్ చైతన్యం దట్ ఈస్ సుషుప్తి స్వరూపం వెన్ ఇట్ ఈస్ వెన్ ఇట్ రిఫ్లెక్ట్స్ ఇన్ అంతఃకరణ వెన్ ఇట్ ఈస్ అసోసియేటెడ్ విత్ అంతఃకరణ ఇట్ బికమ్స్ చిదాభాస ఆభాస మీన్స్ what resembles consciousness okay chit chit is chaitanyam chit abhasa is what resembles uh, what appears like a consciousness or in other words a, a semblance of consciousness since i am speaking in english i have to explain few words into uh, few word ideas also otherwise chida bhasa itself is directly here abhasa it's like your face reflected in the mirror the reflection in the mirror that means the, your 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 reflected face in the mirror is not the original face but it looks all similar to your face okay what is abhasa abhasa is reflection pratibimba reflection means don't take it literally reflection okay because reflection is a word laukika word worldly word hmm? so don't go by that literal meaning of the word here we only mean something is very much similar but not exactly that okay like in a mirror reflection it is not your face your face is here but it looks just similar to that similarly consciousness is also when reflected in the antakarana that is in the wake, waking state consciousness in the waking state uh, is the reflected consciousness why do you call it reflected because it is in association with antakarana in the waking state you are associated with the waking mind the total mind don't take it as an individual mind take the total wakeful state the total wakeful state is called waking mind the whole mind i say samashti mind the the the, the total whole mind other mind can be seen in a two ways <coughs> first is total mind is mind means the whole waking state is one total mind a given object the same mind starts seeing the various objects one by one when you see a given object in the entire waking state see the book table uh, wall and window and anything any given object any given particular object you think of or you understand that is called a vritti it is a vyashti vritti an individual thought the waking as a state has a whole state is called the total mind the total mind and individual thought of the mind this is how we distinguish it the total mind means all the various thoughts that occur in your waking state or you can apply it to dream state also all the various thoughts that occur within the dream state are individual thoughts individual thought is also mind the total mind is the entire waking state or entire dream state is also mind okay but that is a collective mind the total mind another is an individual thought so this is this is only in fact you cannot distinguish them separately it is only a reference point when you refer the whole you call the waking state when you refer the, a given thought you take the same a part of it you are taking the same mind only a part of the mind you are taking so you while referring you can refer two ways 
when you refer as the mind as a whole another is refer the mind as a one part thinking of a given object a small object a small object within the whole waking world okay so the waking state as a whole and also a given thought thought and the mind total mind okay so these two just to distinguish it now when we say chida bhasa <coughs> when we say chida bhasa it is the whole wakeful consciousness is a refl- is a comparable to reflected consciousness to the pure consciousness which is deep sleep deep sleep is pure consciousness and in the waking state you find the same consciousness with reference to the whole waking state so the en- the consciousness with reference to the entire waking state is called reflected consciousness like the face appearing in the mirror is is not the face but a reflection of the face you don't see the face directly in the mirror you only see its reflection in the mirror okay similarly here the pure consciousness is non dual it is not associated with any mind or any upadi the same consciousness pure consciousness uh, with reference to the waking mind the total mind is called chida bhasa abhasa means what appears like consciousness appears like consciousness uh, so this chida bhasa is there all the time in your waking state throughout the waking state there is chida bhasa that means the whole wake chida bhasa is a technical term but in a normal man's term you call it wakeful consciousness what is there pure consciousness and wakeful consciousness so within this wakeful consciousness you start experiencing various objects okay the various objects that you see in life are <coughs> within the wakeful consciousness so the part of wakeful consciousness a small bit so when the individual thought objectifies a particular object so the wakeful consciousness is always there within the wakeful consciousness when your individual mind is assuming a form of a book you perceive the book when it assumes the form of a table you perceive the table you it it forms the it it assumes a form of a chair you 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 come to recognize the chair you come to recognize the chair like this like this the vritti a, a given vritti an individual vritti forms the shape it assumes the shape of form of a particular object okay then the consciousness which is a wakeful consciousness is always there with the vritti i told you the technical the technical means here i just to briefly touch swami ji is told and what others told mula vidya vadins mula vidya vadins say that chida bhasa wakeful consciousness enters into a, a given thought to be able to objectify an external object this is a more a theoretical explanation therefore i am not going into detail just one small point alone i touch otherwise it it is discussed in vedanta paribhasha vishuddha vedanta paribhasha is our swami ji's book which we are discussing two days in a week in kannada okay the vedanta paribhasha is a different book of dharmaraja advarindra okay that i have not taught and it is a highly technical technical in the sense he uses lot of nayayika's language tarkika language oh that becomes very really difficult to each word explanation alone will go for days together it is a highly complex one anyway there he says chida bhasa assumes a form of a thought and recognizes an object but what swami ji says differently is chida bhasa is always there it doesn't have to specifically illume an object see wakeful consciousness is continuously there <coughs> so therefore instead of telling what they say and what swami ji says slightly see the difference what they say is chida 
it's common man's language i say we are not going to tell in technical language because that becomes complicated so that wakeful consciousness they say the chidabhasa wakeful consciousness goes and assumes the shape of the object then you come to know the object swami ji says chidabhasa doesn't have to assume chidabhasa is always there is continuously there because wakefulness wakefulness doesn't begin does your wakefulness means waking consciousness begin do you see the beginning of waking consciousness it is anadi ananta okay the wakeful consciousness or otherwise called chidabhasa is hmm, neither beginning nor it has neither beginning nor end anadi ananta so you do chidabhasa or wakeful consciousness is not functioning is not assuming there is no assumption wakeful consciousness always there in the wakeful consciousness you see the objects that's all swami ji says simple straight way of telling is objects are seen within the wakeful consciousness that's all they say slightly technically wakeful consciousness goes to form assume the shape of an object to reveal it so this it looks oh what is there is a simple way of telling no it makes it technically different now they build up on it and so many other things we leave all that thing how they build up and how they do all those things because it unnecessarily complicates for common man even for a technical common man even for philosopher it is unnecessary explanation so chida bhasa so this swami ji explains is chida bhasa roopa all the worldly objects are only chida bhasas all the objects are wakeful consciousness alone what is world world is nothing but wakeful consciousness all the world is within the wakeful consciousness alone okay chidabhasa padarthah entire world is chidabhasa okay therefore chida vritti antakarana vritti alone the vritti means the thought alone assumes a particular object chidabhasa wakeful consciousness is already there to illuminate therefore every object you see them okay now here you see pramatrutvam we have explained pramana we have explained prameya we have explained prama the resultant knowledge resultant knowledge is the same chidabhasa illumining the vritti which has assumed according to the object the vritti vritti means the vritti of the mind the thought of the mind which has assumed the form of a given object okay but chida bhasa the wakeful consciousness is already there as soon as you assume the vritti consciousness is already there it illumines that means consciousness doesn't go about illumining the vritti consciousness doesn't go i repeat consciousness doesn't go about illumining the object objects are already perceived in the consciousness they are already in the consciousness because this avoids many other technical problems they say that object remaining outside consciousness enters into consciousness this becomes a complex how that vedanta paribhashakara he says objects remain outside they enter into consciousness and then they get connected this is a purely speculative thing therefore it becomes a technical and complicated because you can't think of any object outside your consciousness and entering into your consciousness this is a purely theoretical explanation nobody has found it in your life there in your anubhava therefore that explanation is unnecessary huh? and therefore swami ji dismisses this mula vidyavadi's explanation and he says chida bhasa all the objects are already within the wakeful consciousness you only focus attention that's all they are already within your wakeful consciousness your mind is assuming that form that's all consciousness is already there within the consciousness alone you come to see one by one okay okay we leave it we now we'll not go into this thing our purpose is to say everything is vyavahara okay because this much is required for for our explanation therefore i gave you only this much Uh, and other things more you will you may find in 
in prakriya pratyabhigna prakriya pratyabhigna is the most toughest book tough means you have to be very sorry you have to be very uh, uh, contrasting uh, the bhashakaras prakriya and then others prakriya that's why it becomes a technical otherwise it is easy if you know the basic swamiji's teaching swamiji's prakriya contrasting others prakriya becomes easy easy means you see them how they are how they are speculating rather than explaining pointing out your anubhava vedanta or shankara's prakriya is only pointing out your anubhava it becomes easy to understand because it is there in your anubhava whereas they say what is not in your anubhava they try to build it up they try to explain it through speculation anything speculated becomes a philosophy that means european philosophy it becomes complicated okay so we leave that only we postpone it to prakriya pratyabhigna i don't know whether we will discuss prakriya pratyabhigna i love to do but time is a <laughs> time is a constraint anyway if if it is destined to do if god wishes then we will do prakriya pratyabhigna also there we will discuss this points and for me the text doesn't move it is very slow because point because mixed audience come those who have not heard vedanta or they have self studied people they read books on their own and they come to listen and it becomes very very difficult to explain such people those who have studied from guru mukha particularly swami ji's prakriya then it becomes easier easier for us to explain otherwise you fill your mind with mula vidya prakriyas then it becomes much more difficult because mind gets used to speculating speculating imagining imagining outside anubhava against anubhava and the explaining to such people becomes difficult but anyway my teaching is not meant for such people there are so many mula vidya acharyas in fact they alone are more abounding in the world they can go and learn from them if they are interested but if they want purely shankara's prakriya uh, as as understood and explained by swami ji then you can come to us and it becomes easy for you and easy for me you don't get hurt when i compare and contrast and show the defects in mula vidya vadins you won't feel hurt otherwise if you have all uh, sentiment for mula vidya vadins then better not listen why do you get hurt uh, when you have selected your guru trust him and he will give you brahma gnana i think why should why should you come to me and get hurt okay please don't do that don't hurt yourself because we explain what bhashakara explains directly and then this is how directly we say but if you are prepared to listen to us you are welcome okay otherwise you you already come with some siddhanta some prakriya and you will get hurt if you are open you are open enough you won't get hurt but if you feel what they say alone is right then better go. keep will be with them and you will you will you will get gnana marna that they you are you are responsible and they are responsible it is between you it is your mula vidya teachers and between you you decide for yourself we, do, we are nobody to say anything <laughs> okay if that prakriya convinces you then remain there okay earlier i used to say mula vidya is wrong and listen to bhasha now i think i have changed it now because prabuddhananda swami ji when we were studying long before in 80s a middle of 80s 86 87 he would tell us like that he say we have we have learned this bhasha if you are interested learn otherwise we'll give you you can go there wherever you like you are not forced to listen to our bhasha prakriya nobody is forced i i have to say this because some people have a lot of soft corner for mula vidya but they want to listen to me i i feel very bad for them ayyo poor fellows why do they get attracted to my teaching if you need get attracted naturally we differ from mula vidya and then you feel hurt and i feel very bad for you ayyo i am sorry i am hurting you but what can i do because this is what i speak and then you have a lot of soft corner for mula vidya and then you get hurt with my explanation whenever i point out the difference contrast it you feel hurt so when you have a soft corner for mula vidya go go and let listen that they say in order not to be hurt they expect me 
they even tell me openly, don't touch Mula Vidya. See, they, they have got a lot of soft corner for Mula Vidya and they expect me not to show the contrast and show the defect in the Mula Vidya, how it is speculative, how it is wrong, how it is unnecessary. How it is not only unnecessary, it is an obstructing in understanding the truth. Oh, they feel hurt. What am I to do? I can only advise them. If you have so much of soft corner for Mula Vidya, why don't you go to the teachers of Mula Vidya? There are Mula Vidya Gurus. They alone are abounding. There are more number of people all over the world. You find every town, every city, plenty of people. Hundreds and thousands of Mula Vidya Gurus. Go and learn from them. And spare yourself from getting hurt from me. I don't know. Why do they feel? Why do they take interest in my way of teaching? And they take interest and they expect me not to touch that. <laughs> Poor fellows. But I am telling you, I have become slightly softer now. Earlier I was ruthless. I was ruthless. Because I touch the truth as a truth and no compromise. But anyway, out of consideration for people, people's their own sentiments, I leave them. But I, only, I can only appeal you, don't feel hurt. Go to Mula Vidya Vadi if you have a lot of soft corner for Mula Vidya. Enjoy Mula Vidya. Don't worry, you don't need Brahman. Mula Vidya is good enough for you. You can go and enjoy and be in Mula Vidya. <laughs> okay. For us, there is no Mula Vidya. It is nothing but a, uh, a wrong thinking. It is an unnecessary thinking. There is already a natural adhyasa. It is an extension of adhyasa is Mula Vidya. It is a reinforcing of Adhyasa is Mula Vidya. Okay? Mula Vidya is a reinforcing of Adhyasa, is not a falsifying Adhyasa. They go round and round and round and end up and end up reinforcing Mula Vidya. Reinforcing Adhyasa. Because Mula Vidya is brought in. Those who have heard this Mula Vidya and our explanations can understand. The new people may not understand. If you don't understand, don't worry, it is up to you because you have opted for confusion. Those have, because it is a regular class. Nobody should jump into regular classes and then, and then find embarrassed for unable to understand. Because it is going on for years, to, more than a year. So those have been listening, they understand. So Mola Vidya reinforces Adhyasa. Because otherwise there was no, when Adhyasa is directly there in your Anubhava, where is the need to give an explanation to Adhyasa? Adhyasa is self-evident in everybody's Anubhava. Directly it is evident in your Anubhava. Okay. Swabhavika. Self-evident by self-evident I mean uh, Pratyaksha. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an evident that's all. It is naturally evident to everybody. And then it doesn't need any explanation. Any explanation you give is keeping Adhyasa in view. If you give, if you imagine Mula Vidya, Mula Vidya is also imagined within Adhyasa. Because Adhyasa is there in your Anubhava. Keeping Adhyasa, you are speculating, you are imagining Mola Vidya. What is the point in imagining more? Do you want to reinforce Adhyasa? Why do you have to reinforce Adhyasa? Okay. Do we have to disprove Adhyasa or have to reinforce Adhyasa? And they have got a, some kind of explanation. They say, Vyavahara needs. Okay. Vyavahara needs. Why does Vyavahara need? What is Vyavahara? Do you understand? Vyavahara is Vyavahara. I think it's difficult to translate into English. Vyavahara means the transactions, the experiences of the world and the thinking and all these things. All this what you are experiencing is Vyavahara. Transactions, the relativeness, the relative experiences are called Vyavahara. Karta, Bhokta, Pramata is Vyavahara. Pramatas Vyavahara is Pramana, Prameya, all these things, knowing the world, all these various knowings, knowledges, various ways of knowing, interacting with the world, then the karmas, various actions and interacting, using, all this is a karma Vyavahara. Then Bhoga Vyavahara, various experiences, we work for them, we acquire them and we enjoy experiences, both good and bad, means pain and pleasure, then avoid certain experiences and seek some more experiences, all this is Anubhava Rupa Vyavahara. What is Sukhadukka Anubhava Rupa Vyavahara, Karma Rupa Vyavahara, 
ಜ್ಞಾನ ರೂಪ ವ್ಯವಹಾರ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಕರ್ತ ಕರ್ಮ ಜ್ಞಾತ ಜ್ಞೇಯಂ ಭೋಕ್ತ ಭೋಗ್ಯ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ವ್ಯವಹಾರ ದಿಸ್ ವ್ಯವಹಾರ ಈಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಅನುಭವ ಓಕೆ ವ್ಯವಹಾರ ಈಸ್ ಅಧ್ಯಸ್ಥ ಅಧ್ಯಸ್ಥ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಯು ಫೈಂಡ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ದ ವ್ಯವಹಾರ ಇಂಟ್ರಿ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಂಕ್ಟಿವ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ಯು ಸ್ವಾಭಾವಿಕ ದಿಸ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಂಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಇಂಡಿವಿಜುವಾಲಿಟಿ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಂಕ್ಟಿವ್ಲಿ ಯು ಫೈಂಡ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಂಕ್ಟಿವ್ಲಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ನ್ಯಾಚುರಲಿ ನಾಟ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಕಾನ್ಷಿಯಸ್ಲಿ ಇಮ್ಯಾಜಿನಿಂಗ್ ಓಕೆ ಯು ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಕಾನ್ಷಿಯಸ್ಲಿ ಇಮ್ಯಾಜಿನಿಂಗ್ ಯು ಫೈಂಡ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಎನ್ ಇಂಡಿವಿಜುವಲ್ ಜೀವ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯು ಫೈಂಡ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಫೇಸಿಂಗ್ ಎ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಂಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ವ್ಯವಹಾರ ವ್ಯವಹಾರ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಎ ನ್ಯಾಚುರಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಓಕೆ ನಾವು ದೇಸೆ ದಿಸ್ ವ್ಯವಹಾರ ನೀಡ್ಸ್ ಎನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲನೇಷನ್ ಹೌ ದಿಸ್ ಅಧ್ಯಾಸ ಕ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಕಮ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಪಿಕ್ಚರ್ ವೈ ಡು ವಿ ನೀಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲನೇಷನ್ ಈವನ್ ದ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲನೇಷನ್ ಈಸ್ ಬೇಸ್ಡ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ಅಧ್ಯಾಸ ಯು ಆರ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಅನ್ನೆಸರಿ ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಯುಲೇಟಿಂಗ್ ದೇಸ್ ಎ ನೋ ವಿ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅನ್ನೆಸರಿ ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಯುಲೇಟಿಂಗ್ ದೇಸ್ ಎ ಅಧ್ಯಾಸ ನೀಡ್ಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ಡ್ ಹೌ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅ ರೈಸನ್ ದೇರ್ ಫಾರ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಫಾರ್ ಮೂಲ ನಾವು ವೆನ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲನೇಸಿಂಗ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನಿಂಗ್ ದ ಪ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಧ್ಯಾಸ ದೆನ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ರೀನ್ಫೋರ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಅಧ್ಯಾಸ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಐ ಮೀನ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನಿಂಗ್ ಅಧ್ಯಾಸ ಯು ಆರ್ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಧ್ಯಾಸ ಇಸ್ ಅನ್ ಈವೆಂಟ್ ದೆನ್ ದ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲನೇಷನ್ ಪ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ದೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ಅ ರಿಯಲ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ರೀನ್ಫೋರ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಅಧ್ಯಾಸ ಯು ಆರ್ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ರಿಯಲ್ ರಾದರ್ ದೆನ್ ಡಿಸ್ಪ್ರೂವಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ದೇ ಸೇ ವಿ ಶಾಲ್ ಡಿಸ್ಪ್ರೂವ್ ಇಟ್ ಬಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಡೂ ಇಟ್ ಲೇಟರ್ ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ ಬಟ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ರೀನ್ಫೋರ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಯು ರೀನ್ಫೋರ್ಸ್ ಯು ಗೆಟ್ ಸ್ಟಕ್ ವಿತ್ ಇಟ್ ಎನಿವೆ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಲಕ್ಕಿ ಬಟ್ ವೆರಿ ರೀನ್ಫೋರ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಅಧ್ಯಾಸ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ರೆಡಿಕ್ಯುಲಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ರೀನ್ಫೋರ್ಸ್ ಅಧ್ಯಾಸ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಅಧ್ಯಾಸ ಕೆನ್ ಯು ರೀನ್ಫೋರ್ಸ್ ಅಧ್ಯಾಸ ಬೈ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಔಟ್ಸೈಡ್ ಅಧ್ಯಾಸ ಬೈ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಅಧ್ಯಾಸ ಲೋನ್ ವಿದ್ ಇನ್ ಅಧ್ಯಾಸ ಲೋನ್ ಯು ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ರೀನ್ಫೋರ್ಸ್ ಯು ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದ ಮೂಲ ವಿದ್ಯಾವಾದ ಇನ್ಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಅಧ್ಯಾಸ ಲೋನ್ ಯು ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಗಿವ್ ಎನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲನೇಷನ್ ಯು ಕಿ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಗಿವ್ ಎ ಸೋ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಲಾಜಿಕಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲನೇಷನ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಸೋ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಲಾಜಿಕಲ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಯು ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಬಿ ಲಾಜಿಕಲ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯು ಫರ್ದರ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಯು ಗಿವ್ ಅನದರ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲನೇಷನ್ ಯು ಫರ್ದರ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ನೋ ಯು ಕಾಂಟ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಫರ್ದರ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಆಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಇಟ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ you pretend that you are giving a logical explanation but at a first step you become logical second step you talk of another logic third step you say you have to accept it now you can't go beyond it that means your logic is again is an assumption now they say we are giving a logical explanation but it is nothing but an assumption so why do you try to give the so called logical explanation to adhyasa which is already evident in your life why do you need explanation again so there is some some unnecessary thing entered somebody started it out of out of uh, shall i use a krishna swami ayer's language krishna swami na ayer sachidanand swami ji himself is blunt in explanation krishna swami ayer is much more <laughs> swami ji softer in fact Swami Ji is much softer. If you have read Krishna Swami Iyer's English books, he is much more blunt. You know that? What he says? Uh, out of softer consideration, out of a softer sentiment of tradition, you have fallen for this Mula Vidya Nera. Mula Vidya. You know what he says? Out of a softer consideration for tradition, that means how he... talks so bluntly harshly about tradition <laughs> so there is a two tradition one is a anubhavanusari tradition that is shankara's tradition shankara is traditional but the tradition doesn't violate anubhava
than the anubhava based tradition anubhava based tradition is shankaras sureshwara acharyas gaudapada acharyas even the vyakhyana karas also some of them do but anyway in general we are talking so the anubhava based tradition is one the another tradition is leave aside anubhava in the name of one particular acharya particular uh, commentator particular vyakhyanakara particular sub commentator uh, you want to accept certain things even if it is far removed from anubhava krishna swami ayer bluntly dismisses this okay the tradition which is not based upon anubhava which is far removed from anubhava is based upon a speculation and also blind acceptance of a particular acharya's explanation and he criticizes this bluntly you know what he says about praising shankara shankara doesn't have any considerations for us, any soft soft corner for tradition <laughs> krishna swami ayer's understanding of uh, swami ji also would enjoy krishna swami ayer's blunt way of explaining swami ji has a great respect for krishna swami ayer uh, every word of him he considers it as a amrita tulya huh? he ca- he compared krishna swami ayer he treated him like a guru and he says he was like a krishna to me krishna le- he was like a krishna to arjuna krishna swami ayer like was a krishna to me as cri- as bhagwan krishna was to arjuna he says like a krishna he came and helped me he has got so he had so much so much of respect for krishna swami ayer his explanations is bold thinking as a deep thinking and also bluntly refuting the wrong ideas <laughs> bluntly uh, unhesitatingly criticizing the wrong ideas even in the name of tradition even in the name of acharya you know you read the his preface to mula vidya nirasa is beautiful krishna swami ayers preface to swami ji's mula vidya nirasa sanskrit text he wrote in english he was more fluent with english krishna swami ayer at the british days he was uh, he was in british days therefore he was a poet in english language abba if you read his english books it looks like he is a, a british man came to india <laughs> he is is reading writing speaking all that looks english alone even i am speaking in english what can i do unfortunately <laughs> we am also speaking in english only i love more to speak in sanskrit my first preference is in sanskrit next is in other indian languages which are closer to sanskrit which use plenty of sanskrit words but we have but indians are divided each one knows their mother tongue some people don't know even mother tongue mother tongue means indian language sanskrit we have only reverence not the knowledge of sanskrit see this is a very strange thing of indians is most of us have a reverence for sanskrit but no knowledge of sanskrit they say oh our sanskrit great language but shall i speak in sanskrit no 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 swami ji we can't understand so out of respectfully we throw it into dustbin <laughs> reverentially with all veneration we set it aside and in and we have given the english such a reverential place to sanskrit therefore we discuss vedanta listen to vedanta read books in vedanta and ask guruji also swami ji is it translated into english so shamelessly they ask i am sorry to say that bluntly and they ask i also have to say shamelessly because you are explaining in english what can i do i to have to become shameless shamelessly i have to say yes yes it is available in english we love we 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 venerate sanskrit and not so fluent with our mother tongue either indian language e- even if you are even if you are fluent with your mother tongue that may not be known to all indians if you know some gujarati some bengali or some tamil which i cannot speak i learned kannada just manageable enough to speak i can speak in kannada or hindi or telugu or english okay uh, sanskrit of course but not in other language so therefore for a, a common communication uh, sanskrit we don't have therefore we have put english 
as a common link language to all Hindus, global Hindus. I have been proposing this idea. People, only one or two people liked it. I am sorry to say, it is a highly disappointing nature of Hinduism, uh, a suicidal nature of Hinduism, shameless nature of we Hindus is when I proposed, let Sanskrit be a global link language of Hindus all over the world. We have our own mother tongues. Okay. Telugu, Kannada, Hindi, Marathi, Tamil and Malayalam and so on. We have our own mother tongues. Today I am little deviating and discussing about Sanskrit. Okay. This also I have to say a little bit in between. Otherwise, where is the time? When can we discuss these things? And therefore, we have to discuss these things also a little bit. Sanskrit should be a global link language to Hindus. One Hindu, whichever language he belongs to within India, North Indian, South Indian, or he has gone abroad. He was, even if some of the Indians lived there and they give birth to children there and they are brought up in, 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 brought up in somewhere in the world, wherever Hindus are. Now we have got philosophy, we have got many languages. Language-wise, we can't bring unity, we can't bring one common chord, common connection. Then regarding philosophies, we have got many philosophies, Dvaita, Vishishta, Dvaita, Advaita and so many things. Schools of philosophy are many, we can't connect them again. Traditions are many, Gurus are many, okay. And Ishtadevatas are many, somebody has got Shiva, somebody has Rama, somebody has Vishnu, somebody has Krishna, somebody has Devi, somebody has something else, Subramanya, Vinayaka and so on. Ishtadevatas are many, philosophies are many, our mother tongues are many. Then what is it which brings together? Ramayana brings us together. Bhagavata brings us together. That means our culture brings us together. Okay, the spirituality, not a particular school of philosophy, not particular Ishtadevata, not particular Upasana, but spirituality, Swadharma, Dharma is common to us, Swadharma, spirituality, Hinduness. I think then next comes the Sanskrit. I feel that Sanskrit is one thing. We have got many subjects, all various Upasanas, various schools of philosophy, Sahityas, uh, Ayurveda, Jyotisha, everything is in Sanskrit. Sanskrit would have been a very good element to unite Hindus, at least to connect them each other, it would have been an excellent thing. I suggested in my Facebook, I wrote and the same thing, the old, old my, my post reposted two to three times. There were only few people, four or five people appreciated it out of the millions, crores of crores of Hindus all over the world. Only four or five people appreciated. I don't know what happened to us. So, okay, we need not, you need not express your like on my Facebook, but if you follow it, it is good enough. Okay, what I proposed is Sanskrit should be a link language. In all our mother tongues, Indian languages, there are plenty of Sanskrit words. Okay? 40 to 70, 40 to 70 percent or even more Sanskrit words in our mother tongues. And that part, that percentage, whatever percentage of Sanskrit words you have in your mother tongue, first learn those, identify those Sanskrit words and learn all those Sanskrit words. You already learned that percentage of Sanskrit. And the remaining percentage, supposing you take Kannada and Telugu, around 60%, 55 to 60% of Sanskrit words you have in Kannada and Telugu, uh, okay. And you learn those Sanskrit words first, you are already 60% Sanskrit knower, okay. Then remaining 40% if you learn, or even 30% you learn, 90% of Sanskrit comes to you, you can manage. You can understand Sanskrit easily. I suggested let Sanskrit be global Hindu link language. Otherwise, if we say Sanskrit is a national language, all people start opposing it. Oh, some Bengali suppose and some Tamilians suppose that no, no, we don't want, we have got our thing, our, our Sanskrit. Tamil is ancient, more ancient than the, even the earth was born. Even before earth was born, Sanskrit exists, Tamil existed, they start telling. Okay, so, Tamil must have existed in the Samudra. In the Pralaya Kala, before the earth was born, we don't know, might have existed. But what I told is, considering the popularity of Sanskrit, considering the, uh, our, all our, all our uh, link of all our languages, 
with Sanskrit and also our Shastras, our ideas, our culture, our words being in Sanskrit. Sanskrit is a easily non-offensive link language. We can any Hindu anywhere in the world wants to connect to another Hindu, let him relate to him through Sanskrit, reading, writing and speaking. Okay, reading, writing, speaking that through even net also, Facebook, Twitter and also what? Facebook, Twitter and so on, uh, internet, uh, websites and all. Let one Hindu connect with any Hindu anywhere in the world is through Sanskrit. Okay? Dharma, spirituality, Sanskrit is the common link for everybody. Some people these days you see them, non-Indians are also becoming Hindus. So India can't be the basis for connecting them. Of course, uh, India can be taken as a land, land of spirituality so that way ancestral culture so that way they can connect to each other. But still, they, they are born elsewhere and they have become Hindus. So what is the connection? So India land cannot be the common. One is Dharma. Another is Sanskrit. Okay. Third is the spirituality. Spirituality I am using in a common sense. What is common within that you may have different schools of philosophy, different Ishtadevata, different Upasanas, various Upasanas, but Upasana is common. Okay. So these three things, Dharma, Sanskrit, Spirituality. If you like, you can include Ayurveda. Generally, Ayurveda is also loved by many people. Okay. So, these three or four elements are the common elements which unite Hindus all over the world. And the remaining things are more developed over these three things. Extension of these three things, further minor variations, branches, sub-branches. Okay, but these are the main things, common link, Sanskrit, Dharma, Swadharma. Dharma or Swadharma, Sanskrit and also spirituality. These three. Okay. Even now I suggest if you learn Sanskrit, I tell you it becomes easy for me to communicate to anybody, any Hindu anywhere in the world. Any Hindu anywhere in the world of any caste, uh, any Upasana, any Sampradaya, Sanskrit should be learned. It becomes easy to connect with them. It, it becomes easy to interact, relate to and feel a connection, an intimacy with each other and communication. If I write or read something, if I write or speak something in Sanskrit, any Hindu anywhere in the world can easily understand. Abba, we can save a lot of time, we can save many other things. So, even now I propose the same thing. Please consider this thing. It becomes easy for you, for me also. Now I am, I am teaching one, one morning one Brahmachari comes, Early morning, 8.30 to 9.30, I have been teaching one Mundaka, Mundaka Bhashyam. So, Mundaka being a Upanishad, we don't telecast directly. So, because that has to be learnt personally, it is a being a Veda. So, I didn't, I didn't record it. I am not putting on, on Facebook. The class is going on. It may come to an end in few days. Maybe one week, ten days, it may come to an end. So, after this, I propose to speak on Gita. Okay? But this Gita is going to be in Sanskrit. I am going to discuss in detail the entire Gita in Sanskrit. Okay? Daily. It is a daily class. So, a morning 8.30 to 9.30. It will be there. You can listen whenever you want. It will be there in the Facebook or in YouTube also. I, 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 I will upload it. So, it is going to be in Sanskrit. Those who know whatever little Sanskrit, you can listen to it and improve. Those who already know, it is a joy to listen directly through Sanskrit. So, Shankara's Bhashya alone, every word of it I will explain. I don't compromise Shankara Bhashya. Even Madhusudana Saraswati has gone out and then explained many things independently. But ultimately I found which Swamiji himself loved, Shankara's Bhashya itself is complete and self-contained. It is thorough and complete. Though it is brief, very very brief, but I elaborate it anyway. I shall elaborate it. So, only Gita Bhashya through Sanskrit alone. 
ओके द होल प्रवचन विल रिमेन इन संस्कृत अलोन ऑल द मॉडर्न एग्जांपल्स एंड इन बिटवीन आई इसको आई 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 क्रिटिसाइज पीपल आल्सो इन संस्कृत अलोन यू विल सी एवरीथिंग व्हाट एवर आई वांट टू से आई विल से ओनली थ्रू संस्कृत आई फील एट लीस्ट दैट विल बी द वन थिंग वी कैन कनेक्ट विथ अदर्स ईच अदर ओके देयर फॉर द ग्लोबल हिंदूस धर्मशास्त्र इज वन थिंग आई एम स्पीकिंग मन मन मनुस्मृति शड ई शल ई टेलीकास्ट दट ई डोट नो वेदर पीपल लव इट वन मनुस्मृति क्लास इज गोयिंग आन धर्म इज काम टू आल एंड संस्कृति इज काम टू आल आध्यात्मिक इज काम टू आल दीज थ्री इन वे इंडिया आलो दो दे लिव एल्स वेर दे वर् बॉर्न एल्स वेर बट स्टिल दे हेव ए सेंटिमेंट फॉर इंडिया एज ए लैंड ओके द गंगा यमुना ऑल दीज थिंग्स ऑल ट्रेडिशन आल संप्रदाय एवरीबडी हेज रामायण भारत दिस रामायण भारत भागवत ऑल दीज थिंग्स आर् कामन वेद ऑल दीज थिंग्स आर् कामन टू आज ऑल ऑफ दम एक्सिस्ट इन संस्कृत अलोन देर फॉर संस्कृत वुड हैव बीन ए लिंक लैंग्वेज ए ग्लोबल लिंक हिंदू लैंग्वेज ओके बट इट डजेंट मीन दे डोंट रिप्लेस युअर मदर टंग्स वी हैव अवर ओन मदर टंग्स यू कैन यूज दम इन ए वैल टाकिंग टू युअर ओन पीपल those who know your mother tongue but now what we are doing is people of one language we, we, among the hindus when they communicate with other people like the telugu people talking to kannada kannadigas talking to tamil tamils talking to other people we end up using more english is there any meaning why give why why give english that place which sanskrit deserves we only we only uh, uh, what you say that complete it by only giving reverence to it we finish off our responsibility by only showing rever veneration to sanskrit we think our veneration is complete veneration e with venerating sanskrit our responsibility towards sanskrit is is complete our dharma towards sanskrit is complete but i feel no it is adharma Uh, i mean replacing giving a play giving english the place of sanskrit is adharma you may learn english and use it as a link language to the world other people to the hindus relating to non hindus you can use english i i appreciate that you use english to relate to non hindus but not to hindus alone now hindus even within india not only hindus when relate to nris that is outside india living abroad not only now the people living in america and europe and then canada and all other places only way is english is the only way they always ask us swami ji speak in english swami ji speak in english swami ji explain in english even now indians started talking tamilian says swami ji speak in english when malayali says swami ji speak in english some somebody telugu says swami ji speak in english you are speaking in kannada hayyo rama but nobody says swami ji speak in sanskrit so far nobody has told me swami ji speak in our language which is easily understandable to all of us no they advise me they request me only through english that means after some time what happens sanskrit will be buried under the debris of english okay sanskrit will be buried even this i am speaking in english only because we have nothing else to do <laughs> we have got the english is the only thing huh? the british man has given us a great contribution okay he put english in your mind and in my mind and he wanted us to communicate with each other only through british man only through the english channel okay through english channel alone hindu should communicate with each other only through british man british man whatever the british man does it without his interference without his permission i can't speak to you and you can't speak to me you are not supposed to speak to another hindu without the british man's help see more than any other thing this is the biggest uh, what do you say that contribution or interference or biggest job i don't know what what word to use uh, he put it he put himself in between hindus and you have to speak only with the permission of british man to another hindu <laughs> what a shameless thing but we love to be shameless because we become poetics we we become poetic we use all beautiful english idiomatic english try to explain and we if you feel proud to speak in english oh what a greatness okay why not speak in sanskrit 
I tried, I tried, I, I requested people. I want to speak Manusmriti in Sanskrit. I want to explain Ramayana through Sanskrit. I want to explain Mahabharata through Sanskrit. I want to explain, uh, people say Jnana Yajna, okay, I want to do that Jnana Yajna through Sanskrit. No, no, Swamiji, okay, you may do, but, but English, Swamiji, English, English. I can't understand. But you can learn, no, no, um, it's difficult, but please, English. Who says this? Who says this? Englishman? Ah, psychologically Englishman, that is Hindu. A Hindu is psychologically Englishman. <laughs> his, his hardware is Hindu, his software is English. That means, software means mind. Mind is software, body is hardware. Okay. Physical body is hardware, his mind is software. His mind is in, in his mind is in English, and body is in Sanskrit. <laughs> his body is in Sanskrit, mind is in English. Therefore, he wants all this. I have to say in English. You see what an unfortunate thing. I am explaining all this through English alone. It's a very strange thing. Uh, even even a half a century ago, one century ago, our people, Hindus, were talking educated in English. When they were addressing to our own people, Indians, he says, see, it happened in once in, why, why once it happened, used to happen very often in Telugu areas. The person is educated in modern ways through English and he comes and addresses Telugu people, oh, I am sorry, I am unable to speak in Telugu. His own mother tongue, he says, I can't speak, so let me speak in <laughs> He speaks through English to his own Telugu people and apologizes that I am unable to speak in Telugu, which is my mother tongue. What a sad affair! That fellow is unable to speak in his mother tongue to his own truth, to his own uh, his own Telugu people, and that too he says he apologizes through English. Ah, I am doing the same thing now to our own Hindus. I am unable to speak in Sanskrit because we, our link is broken, our signal Sanskrit signal is broken. We need plenty of towers, Sanskrit towers. We don't have because we have comfortably, happily killed them, shamelessly killed the Sanskrit, and we have replaced it with English. More and more translations are appearing Ramayana translation, Mahabharata translation, uh, and then Bhagavad Gita. Plenty of translations coming. I am asking, is there any modern Sanskrit commentary appearing in English? appearing in on, on Bhagavad Gita, on Ramayana. On Ramayana, there is no later Sanskrit commentary at all. There is no commentary on Manusmuti. There is no commentary on any other book. There is no writings of modern events, modern happenings, modern events. Our Indian history in Sanskrit, we don't have. Ayurveda books are not coming in Sanskrit. Yoga, Asana books are not coming in Sanskrit. And our modern ideas, present days ideas are not coming in Sanskrit. Okay? Even Panchangas are not coming in Sanskrit. Panchangas can come more in English. Eka Dashi, he writes in English. Dashimi, today is Dashmi. Palguna Shuddha Dashmi. Okay? Dashimi, he writes in English. Looks very ridiculous. Okay. Oh. All my time is taken away by Sanskrit alone. It's good. At least once in a while we praise Sanskrit. Because we treated Sanskrit as equal to Veda. Okay. Our tradition treats Sanskrit is not only simple language. The very language is a Upasana. is a Saraswati Devi. Learning Sanskrit is a Dharma is a Upasana. It is a Punyakarya. Just like doing Yajna. It's like doing like any other puja, any other sandhya vandana. Even learning Sanskrit, speaking in Sanskrit, using in Sanskrit is a punya karya. It will take you to heaven. You know what Patanjali told? You learn Sanskrit and use Sanskrit in writing and reading and speaking, you will go to heaven. You will go to Swarga. Swarga loke mahiyate, Patanjali says. We have treated Sanskrit with so much of reverence. And also reverence, reverently we did not learn it. <laughs> of course, some of you may know it, 
but those who have not learnt, I am telling you. With all, we have got a lot of veneration for Sanskrit. With the same veneration, we did not learn. <laughs> the word veneration has got a peculiar meaning, very strange meaning. Out of veneration, we did not learn Sanskrit. Okay? At least let us learn long. And I am going to start in a few days, maybe one week, ten days. Uh, Gita classes in Sanskrit, every word I explain to. If, if there is any difficult word, probably I will use English or any other language to explain that particular meaning. Generally, the talk will be in Sanskrit. And I, 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 I request, I welcome you to listen and also uh, so that hereafter all my talks will be shifted to Sanskrit and it becomes easy for you and to me to communicate. Okay. Otherwise, my mother tongue is different and most of your mother tongue is different. Then if I speak in my mother tongue, you won't be able to understand and if you speak, I won't be able to understand. But there is one common and the Sanskrit, advantage of Sanskrit words, see, Sanskrit is that, that, the same Atma, Deha, Panchabhuta, all these are common words in your language, my language. These are common words. The Panchabhuta, Satma, Deha, Shastram, Upanishad, Veda, Guru, Shishya, all these are common words. You feel as if you are listening in your mother tongue. If I speak in Sanskrit, you feel as if you are listening in your mother tongue and I am speaking in my mother tongue because the words are common. Dharma, Adharma, Punyam, Papam, Sarga, Rishi, Devata, all these are common. Huh? You don't feel that you are speaking some other foreign language other than your mother tongue. How easy it is. You feel it is just your own mother tongue. We have got such a God-given gift, Sanskrit. Especially it is a Bhagavan's, Bhagavan's Anugraha, Bhagavataha Anugraha, Adaru. But we have got an extra mind to reject that Anugraha. Oh, we are very unfortunate people. I hope at least people, I, I, uh, I, I request the people to give thought to these things hereafter. Take, 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 take some time, give some time and learn. And learning Sanskrit, oh, I am aged man now, what can I learn? I don't say that. Any age you must learn. Any age. Or if you want to learn Sanskrit, then I will give you another one class also. Sanskrit learning class. If you want, we can give you one separate class in learning Sanskrit learning. Okay? If you learn Sanskrit, it will be easy communication. All Shastras we can discuss. All over the world, Hindus can easily connect with each other. Ha! Huh? You are not able to see what a beautiful thing it is. The unity comes very easily, I tell you. It Unity comes very easily. Not only born Hindus, even converted Hindus. Not only Hindus of India, Hindus of even Europeans also. All over. European, Chinese, Japanese, anywhere, any Hindus. Any Hindus, I am talking Hindus in general. Born Hindus, converted Hindus, or even adopted. Converted means we don't use the converted. Those who adopted Hindu Dharma, Hindu Shastras, Hindu Upasanas, they, they such Hindus and all Hindus. They all can learn, it becomes easy. You live among the people, Sanskrit speaking people, even for one month you learn, you can just start speaking. It's nothing. You stay one month with them and it becomes automatically easy. Because every day and night you use the same thing, you just get it, it becomes easy. At least you will understand. One or two months you spend time with that and you will understand Sanskrit, okay? At least to do this thing. And Sanskrit is itself is a beauty, itself is a good sadhana. The very speaking of Sanskrit itself is a learning and speaking Sanskrit itself is a good sadhana. It is a punya karma. It, it makes you a good, a good, uh, what you say, a, a, a cultured Hindu, a samskaravan Hindu. Today I spoke more of Sanskrit. I think I will conclude the talk. Yeah, I shall conclude the talk. So this Adhyasa, Vyavahara, okay, it remained there. We will we'll deal with it in the next class. Okay. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namahan Hari Om Tat Sat.